Hello again. Uh, this is the second episode of A Hundred Objects to tell the story and history of Summerhill, uh, the oldest democratic school in the world based on children's rights. Um, the second object is the mug. Uh, the mug is very important uh, in terms of the daily life of the school. We have uh, mugs for breakfast we need them in order for um, juices, fruit juices or for tea and coffee and then there is a morning break uh, which lasts about 20 minutes and uh, in which there are big teapots in the dining room and milk and you can have two biscuits uh, we may examine biscuits later because there is such a thing as a biscuit fine, a tea biscuit fine. Anyway, and then you have your, your cups uh, for a drink at lunch and then uh, there will be afternoon tea uh, at 3.15 or in the afternoon and then supper. So uh, mugs could be very, very important. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, uh, some mugs. When I was at the school, there was a, uh, a member of staff who was uh, very well liked, but one of his problems was that he would use anyone's mug. He, he was very sociable, um, and he, but he would had a tendency to use the nearest mug to him or one that wasn't being used. Now, that meant that he was brought to the meeting, the community meeting, uh, where you can bring problems or bring up people. And he was brought up for using other people's mugs, and at the beginning he get, was given a strong reminder which simply is, uh, is no sort of moral judgment or anything, it's just a reminder to behave and to respect other people's mucks. And then the next time he was given a strong warning, which means that if he continues to do it, uh, then uh, the, commu the community will may consider fining him. And uh, well, a strong warning is a fine, but he may get worse. And then he continued <laughs> um, and uh, he finally he got fined. Uh, a sort of money fine, like 50p or something, something um, uh, nominal. And still he continued, and so the community got really fed up. And someone suggested, because there, there, there's a sense that the, the, of humour in the meeting, but there's also a sense of trying to solve a problem. So they thought, well, maybe we can solve this problem not by uh, fining him uh, in terms of a negative thing of uh, taking his money or whatever that maybe we should just give him a mug so there was a proposal that the school from fines which is the money collected during fines each week um that some of that money like three pounds or one pound fifty uh, would be used by the community to buy him a mug and this happened there was uh, one of the community members at the meeting uh, put their hand up and volunteered to buy the mug and make sure that he claimed the money from fines and uh, duly the, uh, this member of staff got uh, a new mug from the school but did he use the mug well maybe but possibly in his room but the, he kept on borrowing mugs <laughs> so what do you do next well, the next thing they did was they thought, well, you know, we, we don't want to sort of find him. We, we've given him a mug. What's the problem? The problem is he's not carrying it around with him. So the proposal was that the mug has uh, a piece of string or a, a nice uh, a sort of necklace thing that it be tied uh, onto the, the string and, and in a loop and it, he could wear it around his neck. Not all the time, but so that, he, that when he... Uh, has a coffee or tea or orange juice that he he won't leave the cup in his room. Uh, so that was passed. But no. He continued to use other people's mugs. And, uh, and, and it wasn't seen, I don't remember seeing him with, with the mug around the neck, but maybe he did. Um, so what was to be the next fine? The next fine was that the mug be imprisoned so that uh, and on public display in the dining room just to remind him that the that his mug was no longer available to him so uh, this was proposed and carried someone made a little wooden 
prison cell, uh, which is like a box with bars, and this was duly hung in uh, the dining room next to where the toaster and um, the cutlery were put. Uh, so that every time uh, people went in the dining room, uh, especially the, this particular member of staff, he would be reminded that his mug was in prison. But there was a warning uh, with this as well. The warning was that the mug would stay in prison and it would only be released if, if he started to respect other people's mugs. Uh, otherwise, the mug might be executed. And uh, he's continued to borrow other people's mugs. So the next meeting, well, or several meetings later, it was proposed that the mug be executed. And there were various speeches, I remember, and it was voted and uh, it, uh, it was passed or carried, carried that the mug be executed at, uh, I think it was at lunchtime or tea time, tea time. So at tea time, everyone's having their tea. Uh, William, the woodwork teacher, comes out of the woodwork with this huge uh, metal um, uh, sort of hammer, which is very, very big and heavy, uh, used for sort of tent pegs, uh, circus tent pegs, I mean, a really, really big metal uh, hammer uh, not that you need two hands to actually carry. And uh, he went to the dining room, we were all there, he collected the mug and there was like a procession with him at the front and uh, uh, carry, uh, carrying the hammer and the mug and everyone else behind and then we gathered around him but not close. Uh, he took the mug out of the prison and put it on a wood stump by the bonfire or the, and the, the totem pole in front of the house of somehow and he smashed it with the hammer. So that's one of my stories to do with mugs, but it gives a good idea of, <laughs> of how the community works in terms of laws and, and the meeting. This was a community meeting where anyone could go, and this was actually a staff member who, who was being brought up and who, um, yeah, we, uh, this, yeah, who, who had issues about respecting other people's mugs. Um, so apart from uh, dealing uh, sort of part of the timetable of the day and the fact that uh, mugs are really important because if you don't have one then you can't have tea or coffee or orange juice or milkshakes or whatever. Um, it, uh, we also had just one more story. <laughs> we celebrated the tea. I, I discovered in the local uh, industrial museum a wonderful photograph of the Women's Liberal Party, I think, having a tea at, in the garden, which is now Summerhill, in 1913. In 1913 it wasn't Summerhill, it was owned by the Garretts, uh, who were the big family in the area that owned uh, the long shop uh, industrial works and also Snape and the brewer, uh, the, the malting at Snape, the maltings at Snape. It's a major family, and uh, two members of the family were in the, at the tea party of these women. Uh, and the two women in the photograph are Millicent Fawcett and uh, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. But I saw the photograph, and it was in 1913. So in 2013, I decided to uh, reorganise the photograph and the tea party, and we invited. Um, so all the primary schools in the area. We got uh, six of them coming, so six of the primary schools came and they all we made them banners and they all had banners because this is a meeting to do with the suffragists, partly to do with the right of women to vote and of which uh, Millicent Fawcett was the leader of the suffrage, suffrage, suff, suffragists um, Ca uh, campaign. And it was a campaign to legally to use protest petitions and everything, all the legal means to try and get women the vote. And so the primary schools, uh, we, we had a, a parade and a march just like the women did in 1913, but they, the women marched to London. Um, not, not the Liberal women, but women from all over the country as members of the suffragists. And uh, we also had speeches from the women from the Longshot Museum who were dressed up and all the children dressed up in terms of 1913 costumes and um, we had a workshop uh, based on children's rights and how Summerhill School meets but, and we had this huge uh, tea party with cakes made by our wonderful cook Jill and uh, all the children had uh, cakes and we had fair trade fruit juices and we had um, uh, coffee and tea for the, the adults and hot chocolate, fair trade hot chocolate as well. 
and I read a letter out from the local MP. So there we had a wonderful tea party celebrating uh, the political tea party for the women's vote and the local history which even which links to something else called the buildings because they were owned by uh, the Garretts uh, of Millicent Fawcett Garrett who was one of the Garretts and uh, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson the, the doctor. So here's to mugs. <laughs>